Hey guys, David here and welcome back to the Dark Art CNC build series. Uh, as you can see, quite a lot has happened since the last episode. And in this uh, episode here, uh, we're going to start uh, talking about uh, the electronics, uh, mainly focusing on the lead chain servo motors. Uh, I will have separate videos then later about the spindle uh, with the ATC control as well as uh, the master control and some of the more mechanical uh, upgrades here like these nice uh, covers from PCBWay. But in this video we're gonna focus on the servo motors and their drivers. So before we get started, a big thank you to LeadShine for sending over uh, these servo motors and the drivers uh, that uh, go with them. I really like them so far and uh, if you also want to uh, have a look at them, I will have, of course, the website linked down below, leadshine.com. And there you can check out all of the different offerings. And I think they're a very good middle ground for kind of upper end hobby machines uh, as they do not, do not absolutely break the bank. But at the same time, they offer a bit more than just any generic uh, one of AliExpress where the software is terrible and you don't really have any support behind it. Now let's take a couple of steps back uh, and see how we got started here. Now last time we left uh, was the mechanics more or less complete. All of the servo motors were mounted. I have since upgraded all of those uh, belts to the correct ones that are a bit wider. And then the next step was uh, getting started on the electronics. Now this electronics cabinet that you can see here uh, is Actually, quite a uh, good sized. Uh, the main controller is in the muscle, so only the servo drives have to be there in there, the spindle VFD, some relays, uh, power delivery, de delivery, all that stuff. And I was able to find this one used. Uh, these kind of metal electronics cabinets are crazy expensive if, if you buy them used. But uh, I found this one used quite cheap and it came with a bunch of stuff on the inside. I was able to reuse uh, some power supplies, fuses, relays and some uh, connecting terminals and just all of those innards that I was able to reuse uh, properly uh, were about as uh, expensive as I paid for the entire enclosure. So that's why there was a couple of extra holes in here. I'll probably uh, see and see like a color for it and that's also why there's a bunch of lights on the top. I've only hooked one of them up so far. Uh, don't really know what to do with the other ones yet. Uh, maybe I'll remove them or I will use them for some sort of function. But this one here is just saying that there's power. Then after I completely gutted uh, this uh, cabinet, I started lying out everything and uh, making sure that all the different components are spaced away from the walls as they need to be. And I also add that uh, some holes for fans. I have an intake fan on one side and then an exhaust at the like, diagonal other corner. And this just makes sure that there is a bit of airflow in there and it doesn't heat up. I then screwed in all of the uh, servo drives and I just screwed them all the way into the back panel. Now ideally you would usually put like a sub plate that you can easily take in and out. Uh, but the servo drives are actually quite tall, so since this uh, cabinet is not super deep, uh, I had to mount them all the way at the back, otherwise it wouldn't fit. Even now, I cannot uh, put uh, the little covers over the uh, data connectors, and uh, I'm just leaving that exposed. But I think that's perfectly fine. I could 3D print a cover uh, that is not as tall, but uh, I think it would be good. Then after uh, I had me mechanically mounted everything, I started slowly wiring it up. Now this process took a lot longer than I expected. I knew it was going to take a while, but still, uh, between routing all the cables uh, through the CNC, through the drag chains, and getting them all terminated correctly, and uh, wiring up everything in the control cavity, that was like multiple days uh, just of wiring uh, spread over a couple of weekends. And that just kind of slowed down the progress a lot more than I would have liked. But I think I'm mostly done now. Now, if we take a look at uh, in here, uh, it's not super clean. I tried my best of kind of cable managing everything, but there's just a lot going on. Uh, so, forget, please forgive me. Now, one of the main kind of issues, in a way, is that uh, with the master controller here, I have the controller box with all of the I/O here. Uh, so I need to all of the wires for the servos, like the step direction signals uh, for all of that. Uh, I need to route over and also any uh, other input output signals need to be routed from here over here and that required actually a lot of cable. That was another issue that I had. I didn't order anywhere close to enough cable. 
between running it through all the drag chains uh, for all the different functions and uh, then running it between here, the, that's probably close to 100 meters of cables uh, in this CNC. Now you can also see a fifth uh, driver here and that is actually going to be for uh, the motorized uh, dust shoe attachment. That's just a plain old stepper uh, driver. I installed it, I, I run the cable but nothing is installed yet of course as you can see. Uh, that will be much later in the build when the rest of it is completed. Now according to the manual uh, you should uh, wire up the power for the servo drives through a line filter and a contactor. Uh, the line filter is mainly to make sure that if you have any dirty power or uh, spikes in there that that gets filtered out and then the contactor is more of a safety thing. Now I was kind of lazy and did not install uh, those two. I am going through a properly uh, dimensioned fuse so there is that safety and uh, there is this uh, big uh, on off switch uh, which I guess is in a way my uh, turn on and off uh, contactor. Uh, but otherwise I've just wired it directly in there. And while that's not technically by the book, uh, the guys from uh, Li Shine seem to think that it's perfectly fine if you do it this way. It's not going to explode or anything like that. Then apart from the main power input, you of course have to wire up the earth for all of the controllers. And uh, then uh, to the motors themselves, uh, you have uh, the kind of three wires plus protective earth for the motor itself and uh, then you have uh, all the sensor cables that come back. Those sensor cables have a convenient little plug, so you just need to plug those in and don't need to terminate a bunch of uh, things. What is a little bit annoying uh, to wire up are kind of the data in and outputs, as they just give you a little spare connector and then tell you to solder it up, and that connector has a lot of pins. It's three rows uh, of pins that are quite closely spaced, so th soldering that up is a bit of a pain especially uh, if you make some mistakes and have to go back in your cabinet and go and fix them. Uh, that is one big advantage of going with a system like EtherCAT, where you just have to plug an Ethernet cable into your controller, but most of controller does not support that, that's why I'm not going with EtherCAT. But LeechIne does also offer EtherCAT versions of the same drives, uh, which would cut down on the wiring hassle a lot. And that is even with me uh, doing a very minimal install. Uh, all I have wired up are uh, differential step and direction signals. At first I just hooked those up, but it turns out if you read the manual more carefully than I do, you do also have to connect ground uh, for those, while the controller itself uh, does not require that, since the differential signal, if you're not familiar with that, it kind of has in its way its own ground. But uh, the server drives here still want to have uh, the ground of the controller as well. Then the uh, on the output from the drives I hooked up, it's just the alarm signal and that is going to an input on the massive uh, controller. That way, if one of the servos alarms out, uh, the controller will stop and the other axis will also stop and not just the one that alarmed out. Finally, you might have caught it in the last video, the C motor here also has a brake installed. So that one needed a little relay and uh, powering that relay uh, from the control and that uh, just delivers 24 volts uh, to the relay whenever the drive is activated. Then with that I think everything is wired up and I've already moved this uh, machine around a bunch uh, but it is uh, quite fun. Uh, I was quite happy with how the servos work just out of the box, just plugging them in, wiring everything up. Now I had to set a couple parameters uh, since the maximum speed of the mouse is not that fast but uh, I will I guess Put some parameters here up on screen there's no point in me reading them down what i changed uh, but it's also very dependent on what you're doing but there is a very detailed manual for the lead giant server drives and uh, they also have great customer support so you can just uh, email them their your questions and uh, they will let you know which parameters you need to change in what way one other parameter I had to change was the carrier frequency for uh, the servos as there was a really annoying high-pitched whine around maybe like 8 kilohertz uh, that was like driving me obnoxious uh, headache uh, kind of thing. Uh, maybe if your hearing is not as good anymore you don't hear it as much uh, but changing a, a parameter moved that uh, carrier frequency up to 16 kilohertz. Now I can still hear that whine but it's just like at the very limit of my hearing and uh, not nearly as loud anymore. It, I'm sure it does not pick up uh, here on the microphone. 
uh, but it's still a slight high pitch whine. But with the clo uh, enclosure here closed, it's not that bad. <laughs> So as you can see, it moves around and I was just confused about why the x-axis is not moving uh, with the drop pendant here. But there's a good reason for that and that is because I've uh, just uh, kind of gotten started with the tuning of these servo motors. And while they move around fine and uh, it actually already works pretty well, I could use the CNC like this. Uh, I know that by tuning the servos I can get much better performance, positional accuracy will be better and uh, maybe I can even get some uh, higher accelerations or something like that. So for that, uh, to be able to tune them, uh, you just connect to the driver here uh, with a USB cable and then there's the motion control software that you load onto your uh, computer and uh, that allows you to, for one, change all the parameters in a more convenient way instead of having to uh, cycle through the little buttons on the uh, drive itself, but it also has some uh, tuning utilities uh, where you can either manually tune it. There's a scope in there uh, that allows you to kind of see uh, what you're requesting of the drive and that what the drive is actually outputting as well as kind of the feedback from the sensors uh, of like how accurately is the servo following the position you're sending it and all of that good stuff. All right, so here we are inside of Motion Studio and uh, there's a bunch of functions here, but uh, what I'm just going to do for this one here is the one-click tuning. Now this is the version uh, 2.3, which is at this moment actually not out yet. I was trying to use a, a older version at first and I had some issues, so they sent me the uh, access to the newest version, but it should be out very soon. And otherwise I'm sure if you uh, have issues and you want to use the new version, just email them and they'll send you access as well. So here in one-click tuning we can uh, select a couple of options. Uh, like what mode you're in, in position mode, and then for the tuning response you can uh, kind of high, medium, low, uh, depending on how mechanically stiff it is. Uh, now, uh, I'm not sure I might be able to use high response, but I'm going to stick with medium since I do have the belts uh, that are driving the lead screws instead of directly driving them, but uh, I think this is also just kind of the starting point and then it adjusts the parameters anyhow. Then here uh, we can uh, enable our servo and then we can move it. Right now it's moving very slowly it's because the speed was set really slow by default. And then you can jog around to set some safe positions down here, uh, which I've already done here. And uh, then uh, down here you can also set the speed limit and I'm going to tune it all the way up to the maximum of 3000 rpm. Then uh, the tuning will start. So it now finished and you were also able to see some of the scope running and then uh, in here you uh, get some of the uh, end results. Uh, like for example, uh, a fun thing to see is like with these back and forth motions and accelerations, uh, the highest motor current that we needed is at like 42%, uh, which is quite good because the accelerations are uh, fairly fast and that means that once there is actually cutting load uh, my servo motor should still be well within a range uh, of what they can output. I was a bit worried about the 400 watt motors, uh, but this result uh, has me encouraged. We can also uh, go here into compare, and this uh, gives you all of the different parameters uh, that it wants to change, and like what they were before. So we can see that uh, some of them have changed quite dramatically, where others uh, is fairly similar. So one of the main ones uh, is the stiffness and inertia levels. So we can see the stiffness didn't change very much. 
so I guess my initial uh, choice was uh, pretty good. The inertia ratio increased by like 15%. And then what uh, changed quite dramatically uh, are the gain for the feedback loop. So we have the, like the position loop gain uh, like almost 3x and same with most of the other ones. And uh, I don't actually know what a lot of these parameters do specifically, but that's why it's good to have one of these one-click uh, tuning software uh, where you don't have to know what all the parameters do, but you can just let it run and then it tells you what parameters are good. So we're going to just hit done and save those parameters uh, to the drive. Now let's also have a quick look here at uh, the scope. So let's uh, look at one of those pulses. Uh, this is when it was uh, running during the tuning here. And uh, you can see the different directions as uh, the different directions it was going. And if we zoom in here a bit, here on the left, you have the explanation of what the different uh, things mean. Uh, so here uh, in orange is what it's kind of commanded. So what, what we want it to do. Here in blue is the position deviation of like how wrong it is. And as you can see here, it actually ended up tuning it perfectly. And then here in red, you can also see uh, the current that it was pulling. Then one thing uh, to do uh, to maybe get a bit of a more clearer or more uh, extreme uh, sample here, you can go to, uh, to trial run, to position trial run. And this will basically do the back and forth motion and then let us observe it with, uh, with the scope here. Oh, need to enable the server. <laughs> All right, let's have a look here what the scope says for those movements. Yeah, so maybe that was not recorded uh, during the tuning movements here, but we can see here that the blue curve is kind of how far off it is from where it is supposed to be. So here we can see that, well, of course, if it is stationary, it's exactly where it needs to be. And then once it starts moving, uh, there is a little bit of deviation. So here we are at maybe like 37. Uh, I'm assuming the unit here is uh, pulses. And as a reference, uh, uh, I believe uh, there are, I can actually tell you exactly how many pulses there are per millimeter. So that means uh, we have uh, 400 uh, pulses equal one millimeter. So if we are uh, here at uh, 37 pulses, that means we are about 0.1 millimeters off during the movement of where it expects to be. And this actually seems fairly high for me, but uh, I did some tests before, uh, before tuning and uh, there the de deviation was much worse. So I think this is actually pretty good. And like whenever it stops, it does still reach uh, the end point. So if you're know, cutting out the square, uh, then the size of the square will be accurate. It's just that where, how fast it uh, moves uh, is a bit different from uh, what it thinks it is. So now with the x-axis tuned here, uh, all that is left to do the y-axis and the z-axis as well. And uh, there is actually a small issue with that. And that is that the y-axis of course uses uh, two motors. So you can actually slave the uh, motors directly with the Leechein uh, servo drivers and kind of connect them together. Uh, however, the issue with that is that I want to be able to square the gantry up uh, by using two homing switches and uh, therefore I have it directly connected to the mouse. So you can connect your homing switches to the drives as well, but it just makes it a lot more complicated in my case. Um, but the only reason why I even bring this up is uh, because for tuning uh, you can only connect to one drive at a time. Uh, so I can only move one of the sides and that of course does not work. I need to move both of my sides at the same time. Now one of the ways uh, you can uh, do this is by just temporarily uh, slaving the two drives and doing it this way or alternatively you can change the parameters manually. You, I can move it back and forth uh, controlled uh, by my controller and then just observe on the scope uh, how it is re reacting, change some parameters, see if that improves it at all. Uh, I'm not quite sure yet what will be easiest, but uh, I'll let you know what uh, ended up working. All 
All right, so I now went ahead and also did the tuning for the Z-axis and that went uh, quite well again, of course. And uh, looking at the scope afterwards, uh, I also saw once again, saw the like relative position deviation, but actually uh, I paid attention a bit more and saw like the direction in which the deviation is. And that uh, led me to clue in that this is not actually an error, but it, this is a feature. And that's because basically, uh, let's say that these belts uh, in here that I have are rubber bands, like super soft. So when you pull on one side to kind of accelerate it, uh, it is going to lag behind slightly. And so what the drive here is actually doing is the deviation is in the forwards direction. So it is uh, kind of moving the drive a bit further, a bit faster when it starts accelerating. And uh, that should uh, mean that it stays more on track on like the actual uh, tool head end instead of the drive. At least that is my current interpretation of this. I'm, as I said, no expert on servo tuning, uh, but that would make sense. And it also looks like very nicely uh, following the shape of kind of the acceleration and then it's very steady during the movement uh, whereas before the tuning it was a bit more kind of all over the place so i think that is actually what is going on here now as for the y-axis uh turns out that i don't think that my servo drives are actually compatible with that uh, master slave uh, setup that i saw over on travis mitchell's uh, channel uh, by the way, if you don't know his channel, make sure to go check it out. Uh, he is building like uh, DIY fiber laser cutters and he also used uh, Leechrine servo motors. However, he used the EL7 servo drives and I have the EL6 uh, drives. Uh, so I think that might be an issue of that. At least in the manual, looking for how to exactly set that up, I could not find anything. And the parameters that he referred to in his video uh, do not exist on my control. So that's why I'm assuming that uh, this slaving function is not uh, available. Now that's not really a big deal, uh, like I'm not actually using it anyhow, but that just means that I cannot do the tuning this way. So it would mean that I have to do it manually and uh, just based on the little position error uh, thing here, I don't think I quite know enough about uh, how to do it manually, but I just uh, ran a test of moving back and forth, looking at the scope uh, that is connected to it and it actually looked quite nice the scope uh, it looked uh, like there was almost no position deviation error which i mean knowing now uh, is maybe i would want a little bit however uh, the y-axis since it is a much heavier gantry also has some like different uh, properties and uh, there's also two motors uh, so the load on the motors themselves was also a lot less on the y-axis. I think just moving back and forth, I was in like 20% range uh, instead of uh, up to like 30, 40% on the x-axis. I also have slower accelerations just due to the mass and the sturdiness of the table, which it is a fairly sturdy table. I can jump around on it, no problem. But if I set the accelerations uh, too high on uh, the y-axis here, it starts to jiggle all over the place. And uh, that is definitely not good for anything either. But I, the accelerations are still uh, fairly good. I think I have set it at 1500 millimeters per second squared uh, on the y-axis. On the x-axis, uh, I have uh, 2000 millimeters a minute squared. So it's not a huge difference, uh, just a little bit. So with that, I think what I'm saying is that for now, I'm not gonna worry about the tuning of the uh, y-axis motors. I thought about just applying the settings from the x-axis motor to it, but looking at how different the tuning values for the Z and the x-axis motor ended up being, I think uh, I will be doing more harm than good by applying uh, settings from a different axis to it since the default configuration works quite well. And if I figure out in the future how to properly uh, do the auto tuning for this, uh, then I might come back to it and I'll mention it in a future video. But for now, I just want to basically move on with this build. It's been taking a really long time to get uh, to this point and I just want to be using this uh, machine. Now I have some issues still with the spindle. Uh, this is actually going back to Germany uh, later today and I uh, hope that this clears up uh, quickly so that we can finish up this build and I'm just as anxious uh, to see as you uh, how it performs in the end. With that, once again, a huge thank you to Leechine for providing all of the servo motors. And thank you guys for watching these videos. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I will see you next time.